Hello everyone, today I'm bringing you the final part in the series of videos I've been making looking at the first issue version of the British Army's PLC or Personal Load Carrying Equipment. And what we're looking at in this video, primarily, is the rucksack from that equipment. We'll be looking at the utility straps as well. They're a very simple part of the equipment that won't take long to look at. The rucksack was made in two different sizes. You have the long back and the short back. This particular example is the long back. And the intention was to issue the long back to taller soldiers and the short back to shorter soldiers. That was the intention of having the two different lengths or two different sizes of rucksack. I've seen different heights quoted as to what the cutoff would be between getting a short back and a long back. I've seen six foot quoted, so six foot and above and you'd get the long back and below that you'd get the short back. I've also seen five foot six quoted as well as being the cutoff point. So quite a big discrepancy there of four inches in height. If anyone can clarify that in the comments, I'd be interested to know the fitting instructions which I have access to don't specify, which isn't very useful. But if anyone can clarify that for sure in the comments, I'd be very interested to know. But that's the intention of having the two different heights, the two different sizes of rucksack. The design itself draws heavily on civilian rucksacks of the 1980s, particularly Berghaus, who were a very popular manufacturer, both on the civilian market and also private purchase or unit purchase. Uh, the British military as well. For good reason, they were very good designs and certainly pilfering various elements of the design, the removable side pouches being a good example of that for the personal low carrying equipment rucksack was a good move on the part of the British Army and these are these remain very popular certainly on the surplus market they're still sought after and obviously as well as the green examples you have the DPM and the MTP versions of this as well uh, all still available on the surplus market the green ones are a little bit harder to find but they are a good design of rucksack and as I say still very popular. Talking about the design in more detail we'll start at the top as we normally do and at the top here we have a pouch on top of the main flap which you can see here that closes with the zip on the far side which we'll have a look at in just a minute when we move this round. On top of this we have some of the myriad uh, fittings on the outside for attaching equipment to the outside of the rucksack so we have loops at the front here and loops at the back through which you could run the utility straps which we'll have a look at in just a minute or two and therefore you could carry say a rolled sleeping mat across the top of the main flap here should you wish to that's one element of the design there are many fixing points on the outside of this for carrying various different bits of kit the flap itself has deep sides and is therefore quite weather tight that's the intention of that part of the design it closes with the two straps at the front here which you can see and these are obviously tightened down using these straps here running through loops on each side of this small pocket in the middle here obviously stops them flapping around too much one element of the design which i had to look into in terms of external stowage is this little set of tapes sewn on just behind the strap securing the flap on this side there's also a loop down here on the bottom of the rucksack as well i believe the original intention of this part of the design is to carry an ice axe on the outside now this is a common feature found on mountaineering rucksacks including the, some of the civilian designs which this was based on and the rucksack was intended for issue pretty much universally so it has various fixtures and fittings for more specialist use as well as more general use and that's the original intention according to my understanding of what I've been able to, to glean uh, researching this is that this is intended to take the uh, handle of an ice axe coming up here and the head would run across the bottom and be secured with this loop at the bottom here a fairly common element of civilian designs at the time and something carried across to the PLC rucksack no doubt this found other uses as well for those not carrying ice axes obviously not a typical part of the kit of an average British soldier in the center here we have a fixed pocket in addition to the two side pockets on the rucksack here and this is has both a flap with a velcro fastening there and then a zip across the top here as you can see there so we have a small central fixed pocket on the front there down each side we have sections of nylon webbing stitched on obviously with a gap here which you through which you could uh, slide a utility strap basically meaning that you can carry you can use this as an attachment point for bungees or utility straps to carry extra kit strapped onto the back of the rucksack so quite a lot of fixing points formed by these sections of webbing stitched on down each side as you can see there that's pretty much it for the back of the rucksack here we'll start moving this round and have a look at some of the other fixtures and fittings We'll have a look at the left hand side of the rucksack now i'm not going to show you the right hand side because it would be rather difficult to point everything out around the mannequin so we'll look at the left hand side it's basically a mirror image apart from the fact we have this zip here to access the top compartment on the left hand side and we open this up 
You can see easily access that compartment on top of the main flap there. It's a heavy duty plastic zip with an actual metal zipper there and works very well. It's a, a heavy duty design. It's basically the same as that used on the rest of the rucksack on a lot of British clothing and kit at the time. So fairly standard in that regard. You can see the side pouch here, which is of course removable as we've seen in the previous part in this series. This attaches with zips on each side. You can see those underneath the flaps here. Also with these buckles here, and there are corresponding two buckles on the bottom as well. One of them is missing on the actual main body of the rucksack, one of the uh, buckles which this is supposed to clip onto, and I'm not sure if it's on this side, but that's one unfortunate thing with this. It, it is missing one of those buckles. It has been damaged in that regard, but it still functions perfectly well. So you not only have the zip securing these, but these two buckles here. So in order to remove this, you have to undo all four buckles and then unzip both zips and it just pops off the side. And we'll have a look at that in just a minute. The pouch itself we have had a look at in the previous part of this series. Underneath the flap here, of course, we have a heavy duty zip to access the side pouch. These are one single compartment inside. You have fixtures on the outside here, which you could use to attach other kit using utility straps. You have loops sewn on there, as you can see. We'll remove this now and have a look at the fixtures you have underneath this because there are a series of straps down the side here with which you could attach something to the side of the main body of the rucksack and we'll have a look at that now. So we can now see this with the side pouch removed and you can see underneath we have these three straps which again would allow you to carry a load strapped onto the side of the main body of the rucksack here and you can also see the fixtures and fittings for attaching the side pouch. We have the buckles at the top here, we should have two at the bottom, there's one here, the one on, that should be on this little tab of nylon webbing here is missing, it's broken off at some point and you have the zips running down underneath these flaps on each side as you can see. So that's how the side pouch is attached and these are the fixtures you have underneath when the side pouch is removed. The final things to talk about while we have this on the mannequin are the shoulder straps and the waist belt here. The shoulder straps as you can see here are heavily padded nylon over the shoulder itself. We have a strap which is stitched on here and then runs up to a buckle at the point that this attaches onto the rucksack up here. So you have a point of adjustment up there with this strap with a thumb loop through the end there to make it a little easier to adjust this in. And then you have another of the same design of buckle here where the strap runs off to the base of the rucksack. And again, that has a, a loop worked in the end there to make it easier to adjust in, particularly when wearing this, you can tighten these in easily. And they come down to the triangular section of nylon we saw when we looked at the side profile of this. The waist belt itself, we've already seen the padded hip pads around the side here. And then you have the nylon strap running around to the front and the Nexus type buckle at the front there. Very simple design, as I say, drawn across basically from civilian rucksacks. Works very well. Having the two adjustment points for the shoulder straps is a good element of the design. And we'll see when we look at this in a little bit more detail, we'll have a look at the back of this, how the shoulder straps attach on at the top as well. You can't really see that on the mannequin. So we're going to have a look at this in a little bit more detail now, have a look at some of the design elements we couldn't really look at with this on the mannequin. That's what we're going to have a look at now. So here we have the main body of the rucksack with the side pouches removed, which just makes it a little bit easier to maneuver. But I'll also mention here the capacity of this. The rucksack as we have it here has a capacity of 75 litres. And then if you add the side pouches, you get a total of 90 litres with both of them attached. So each of the side pouches is seven and a half litres capacity. Just to give you the volume of what this thing will carry. It's uh, quite, a, quite a good carrying capacity really. So one detail I want to mention is we have the rucksack laid out like this is the loops here, which obviously I mentioned before, you can pass the tails of the straps for the main flap through these. They are also potentially another attachment point for bungees and things like that. If you take the buckle, pass the buckle down, short, shorten these off or, or loosen these off rather, first of all, something I've seen mentioned and seen photographs of as well is method whereby the buckle is passed down through these and then up to the flap like that. And this means that if you're carrying this with a um, smaller than average load and the flap needs to be closed more tightly, you can do that by looping the strap down through here and you don't end up with a very, very long tail of the loose end of the strap coming down. So you simply loop that strap through this loop on the front of the rucksack here before attaching it to the flap. And that means that you obviously don't have quite as much loose strap flapping around after you've closed the main flap of the rucksack. So that's just something I've, I've seen and read about. Uh, there's a 
something that was done. So I just wanted to illustrate that here. Let's loop that back through there to keep everything out of the way. We'll have a look under the flap now at the markings which are found underneath the flap. We'll also have a look at some of the internal details as well. So looking under the main flap of the rucksack here, we have the ink stamp, which you can see here. The date there of 1989. This main rucksack itself is part of the first issue components. The two side pouches are actually part of the second issue components and you may have been able to see a colour difference in the film of this all attached together on the mannequin. The side pouches are a slightly different shade of green and they're also infrared reflective so they are part of the second issue components but visually in terms of the, the manufacturing and the components they are the same so they, they serve for the purpose of illustration in this video. Uh, obviously they are infrared reflective which is not a feature of the initial issue of PLCE. But you can see the designation underneath the flap here, Rucksack Long, and then the manufacturer, which is CQC, Chelsea Quilt Company. Broad arrow in the centre there, you have the contract number underneath that, and at the top, which I haven't mentioned, is the NATO stock number, as you can see there. Underneath the flap, we also have another compartment in here, which closes with another of these zips. And then a further feature to talk about while we're looking at the rucksack from this angle, if I turn it over here you have a draw cord around the outer neck which closes with a, a fixed lock fixture here as you can see you just slide the center section of this to lock the draw cord in place and this is obviously a nylon draw cord and then there's an inner throat as well which can be fitted with a, a draw cord but doesn't have one in this instance but could be fitted with the, basically the same design of draw cord and then in here it's just one big one big open compartment in there. At the back here, you can see a series of snaps or press studs, and there's also a section of Velcro along here as well. If I open this up, you can access the internal frame, which you can see slotted in here. And this slides out. In this instance, it's just two pieces of aluminium connected to a top piece with some rivets as you can see here and then the ends are shrouded in rubber as you can see there and this is what gives the rucksack its rigidity is this aluminium frame which is fitted internally which was a, a common feature of rucksacks of this type of the time and is obviously still common today. I believe the later patterns of PLC rucksack add a third uh, strut one of these long sections to this top piece and this slots into sleeves, which you may be able to see inside here. Uh, can we see them? If I turn this up here, you can see the top of the two sleeves into which the struts of the frame slot. So they slot down into these all the way down if we can. It's a little awkward to do at this angle. There's a stop part way down which catches catches these when you're trying to slot them in or certainly the, the left hand one so I won't be able to do that in camera I'll get this slotted back in and reattached and then we'll have a look at some other details. I have a closer look at the loops on the main flap of the rucksack which are designed to take the utility straps a little easier to see these here than it was when this was on the mannequin. We have a set of the loops here we have a set up here on the top of the flap as well central section there forming something of a carry handle and then on the back of the flap here around towards the shoulders we have another set as well and obviously the utility strap could be looped through these there are a pair of utility tra straps provided as part of the equipment one of those could be looped through each side to carry a load on top of the rucksack that's the idea with this i flipped this over now so we can have a look at the details on the back how the shoulder straps attach and so forth and to show you that i'm just going to bring this around so we can have a closer look here first of all the padded section of the shoulder straps itself is stitched in here with this reinforcement piece across the back as you can see there and you can see in here how the carrying handle at the top here attaches into this. There's a section of uh, nylon webbing here which forms then is brought in and joined together to form the carrying handle the top here. Hopefully you can see that there how that's constructed and then the shoulder strap also attaches via this one inch strap at the top which has that buckle for adjustment which I mentioned when we looked at this on the mannequin. You have that top point of adjustment here where it actually meets the top of the rucksack and then you have the strap down here which runs round to attach onto the bottom of the rucksack 
which has adjustment there as well with these big loops sewn into the end of the straps. And you can see there's a triangular section of nylon for a good strong connection point where that meets the bottom of the rucksack. The waist belt, you can see here the padded section which goes around the hips. The waist belt attaches on at the same point and on both sides you have that padding which goes around the, the side of the hips. Nice padded section here to sit on the hips itself. See separate padded sections across the back there. And these two loops here are something which, again, I didn't actually know the use of until I started doing some reading on this a little while ago. And my understanding is these are intended for carrying the rucksack using a harness when abseiling. And again, the rucksack itself is designed for, to be somewhat universal and used by uh, specialist troops as well as uh, regular infantry. So that was a part of the design and an element of the design which could be used for that purpose. I'm sure these found other uses as well, but my understanding is that's the initial intention of these two loops found around near towards the base of the rucksack on the back. So you have that there. Another little feature we'll look at just while I have this around here, that loop I mentioned, which possibly wasn't all that clear to see when we were looking at this on the mannequin, the loop for the ice axe, which sits at the bottom here, offset to one side and corresponds with that tie tape on the back, which I mentioned previously. So that's the back of this, something we couldn't really see when we were looking at it on the mannequin. The final thing to look at here are the utility straps, which I've mentioned on several occasions throughout the series, but which we haven't looked at yet. These are very simple, issued as a pair, and they are simply a piece of nylon webbing with a buckle attached at one end, as you can see here. We have the, the standard non-slip buckle, which uh, forms one of the, the main fittings used throughout the equipment. Issued as a pair, as I say, you can see the designation and the other details directly ink stamped onto the back of the strap here, marking these out as a first issue version. The later versions of these have a stitched on printed label. And the buckle, of course, works by slotting the strap through the center section and then down through the outer slot. And then that locks under tension. Just a, an illustration there of how these, these buckles operate. Very simple, used on a lot of civilian gear as well. And very effective design. So that's the two utility straps. They could be used for various different purposes, as mentioned in this video, for attaching equipment to the outside of the rucksack. And they could also be used through the loops, the lower loops on the backs of the various pouches forming part of the belt kit to draw those in around the body and keep them nice and close and tight to the body. And the utility straps could be used for that purpose as well. So a very useful bit of kit to have, far more practical than the utility straps provided with the preceding 1958 pattern equipment. They're actually long enough to be of some use compared to those with the 1958 pattern, which did have their uses, but these are far more versatile than the uh, straps provided with the 1958 pattern equipment. So that's the last component we're going to look at in this series. As I say, we're moving on to look at the later issues of this at some point in the future. There's one final thing I want to talk about in relation to the rucksack. Unfortunately, it's not something I can show in the video, but it's nevertheless something I wanted to mention, so I've left it to the end here. There were bags produced to act as liners for both the side pouches and the main compartment of the rucksack. There were two different versions of these sets of liners, one made in clear polythene plastic and the other one made in a waterproof nylon. So you'd have two smaller bags to line the side pouches and one larger bag to line the main compartment. And as I say, there were two different versions of these sets of bags for lining the rucksack. Don't have examples of these, something I'd like to pick up in the future and perhaps that'll feature in a future video. Just something I wanted to mention here as an additional part of the design. Unfortunately, not something I can illustrate in this video, but they were produced for use with the PLCE rucksack. So hopefully you found it interesting looking at this. Obviously these were introduced at a time when personalization of kit was becoming far more common in the British Army. And I'd be very interested to know if you found particular features of the design useful, if you had particular ways of stowing things and using the external fixtures and fittings and so forth to carry extra kit. I'd be very interested to know in the comments of user experience of, of using these uh, rucksacks. They're a very good design, as I say, it's still very popular on the surpl surplus market as already discussed. And as I say, they draw heavily on popular private purchase items, which is often a good way to go when designing issue kit. So that's a look at the PLC rucksack. Obviously, we've looked at the utility straps as well. This brings to an end the series looking at the first issue version of the components of PLCE. Going forward, I hope to make videos looking at the later issue versions of this equipment. 
and they will be coming out in the not too distant future, hopefully. Um, that's the intention anyway, certainly later on this year, that's the idea. If you have found it interesting looking at this and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address in the description as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.